our second week in our four-week series on fear not, or other words, uh, don't be fearful, don't be afraid. And I think this topic is something that can touch every single person here because we do experience fear at times in one way or another. And not just those that are in this room here, but those that are watching from home or on vacation somewhere. So glad you're with us, joining us. And uh, we're here to worship God and glorify him by looking into his word. Because when it's all said and done, it's not programming, it's not people, it's the word of God that we base our hope on. We need to be people of the word, reading it, knowing it, living it. And that's going to make a difference not only in our life, but in the lives of those that we touch. So author Martha Hickman writes, I had just gone through a series of medical tests. Fearful of the results, I went swimming at the local YMCA to get my mind off things. And there I noticed a father carrying his son over to the deep end. Still holding his child, he plunged into the deep water. A few seconds later, they, they surfaced and the son was laughing and brushing water away from his eyes as his father guided him safely to the edge of the pool. This picture of a father and child spoke powerfully to me, she says. I realize that just like that boy, we are protected by our Heavenly Father, and we can be confident even when we're in the deep end, we're in His arms. I want to talk to you today about becoming free of fear and anxiety, in that we should give all our fears to God, making our requests known to Him, and that we should expect peace. So, hey, man, let's talk to our Father about this big thing called fear. So, we don't want to have it holding us. We want to be able to say, hey, we're holding you, ready to throw you into the arms of God. Father, we pray now with confidence that you are the one who can help us in this struggle. Some people, man, fear, they don't have a worry at all. Others, have allowed it to consume them, and actually having an, an unhealthy fear in their life. And so, God, I pray, as with all things, that you would give us victory through you in this matter of fear, anxiety, doubt, concern, etc. God, thank you. Man, these songs today that we sang were so rich in meaning, and the, man, they spoke to me. They touched my heart. God, we, we want to worship you. And so now, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to anoint me. God, speak through me in a powerful way. God, not just to make a good speech, but God, that almighty God, we would sense your presence, that you'd grab a hold of each one of us with loving arms and, and just you know be able to whisper in our ear, I love you, I'm holding you, I got this. God, help us to recognize your presence in a very real, tangible way. And perhaps that looking at you with such confidence that perhaps in ways that we haven't had in a long time or maybe ever. And Father, I, I, I pray if there's anyone here today that they do not have a personal relationship with you through Jesus Christ. God, I pray that today would be the day that you would not only rescue them from fear, but that you would rescue them from sin and its penalty, and that you would give them eternal life and relationship with them on this planet. And so, God, move in our midst, God. We celebrate you as we come to you to teach us now. Help us have open hearts and willing hearts. Speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So becoming free from fear and anxiety. For many of us, fear and anxiety are an ever-ready responses to the troubles in this life. It's like, yeah, right, okay, we got matters, issues, we got a meeting, we've got this bill due or whatever, and immediately our reaction is fear. Some feel this way. It's so deeply ingrained in our thinking that you could say that fear really has become a habit for some. The good news is that, like any other habit, you can develop new ones in place of the old. And that's my prayer today, that we would develop new habits in place of the old as we look at pressures of this life. 
So let's discover what the Apostle Paul says as he writes to the Philippian church about this topic of fear. It's found in Philippians chapter 4, just two verses, 6 and 7, and they read like this. Don't worry about anything. Now, if you were going to make a bumper sticker, bam, put that on your car, your truck, you know, uh, put it up in your house somewhere. But the Apostle Paul says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I think we can all agree that fear and anxiety uh, you know, are, are intimately related. We can also agree that living a life completely uh, uh, void of fear, uh, of all kinds of fear and anxiety sounds too good to be true. So is Paul being realistic when he says, don't worry about anything? Is he being realistic? Has Paul ever driven on 95? (laughs) Has he ever had to deal with this kind of inflation? Come on, what about health care deductibles? Has he ever had to to carry a mortgage and had to pay it every month on time? You know, he doesn't have any idea how difficult it is to live in 2022. While it's true that Paul lived in a very different time and experienced life in in very different ways than we do today, it's also true that he just might know what he's talking about. For that, I, I think we should look at one of his most personal letters as he's sharing about his own life Uh, where he writes to the the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians, his second letter to the Corinthians, in chapter 11, he writes these words. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. So for Paul has as much experience as any of us with trials and tribulations. He's had many opportunities to be scared out of his mind and to work through fear and anxiety. Now, in light of all this, he also says in Philippians 4, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Shipwreck, beaten, stoned, cold, hungry, thirsty, whatever it is, somehow he was able to be content. So what's Paul's secret of being content, being free from fear and anxiety? And he tells us, give all your fears to God. Give all your fears to God. I know it sounds simple. I I know it feels like the answer should be more complicated for our complex problems, but I know it's true. See, the secret that Paul learned about fear, anxiety, and worry is that they belong in the hands of God, not yours. There are things that we could be fearful of and have anxiety over and concern over. They're big, important things that are very real, And Paul would say, 
they're not your worries, they're God's. And by the way, God's not worrying over them. See, the way to put it in the hands of God is through gratitude-laced prayer in every circumstance and situation you find yourself in. Let me say that again. The way to put it in the hands of God, the way to put your fear, your anxiety, etc., the way to put it in the hands of God is through gratitude-laced prayer in every circumstance and situation you find yourself in. Now, it's not that fear, anxiety, worry, doubt, etc. doesn't exist. It's that they have a proper place. The difficulty, of course, is developing the habit in which you place those troublesome circumstances in the hands of God instead of holding on to them yourself. I think a lot of us place them in the hands of God, but we kind of pretend that we didn't attach a rubber band to them, right? Here you go, God, and I catch it again, right? You know, you, you give God the fear and it snaps right back into your hands. Well, we're going to work on improving that approach. And what the Apostle Paul says, as you are giving your fears to God, make your requests known. Let's talk about that a minute. God's not surprised about the way you feel. He formed you in your mother's womb. He's numbered your days. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows you better than you know yourself. So let's go back to Philippians 4, verse 6, our main text. The Apostle Paul says, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. No matter what it is, Paul says, pray about everything. No, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Are you praying about everything? Praying, not have you prayed once and then gone to figure it all out on your own after that. No, he's saying pray about it. Be praying about it. Pray about everything. When you are in need, especially when you're fearful, you should talk to God about it. Dump your guts to him. Go in your house, find a room where no one's around, close the door, and it's you and God, and just have it out. Lay it out to him. Pour your guts out. Cry, yell, scream, fall on your face, whatever is needed, but continue to bring it to God. Not that you have to inform him because he already knows, but it's the process of you knowing what's going on, you being honest before God and you coming to God to say, God, please do something about it. It's not just a complaining session. It's a child coming before the Father and crying out and saying, I need you in this situation. And name it out. Not only tell them what it is, but tell them what your feeling is. Tell them if you're struggling, if you're, you, know, you need to tell them that I'm having a hard time trusting you. Tell him that. He wants to hear from you. Parents, remember when your kids had a bad day at elementary school or maybe even high school. And what do you say? Hey, how was your day? Hmm, yeah, fine. Don't you love that when your kids go, hmm, shrug your shoulder? What'd you learn today? Nothing. What happened? Nothing. How you doing? Nothing. As parents, it kind of frustrates you. A parent, our Father in Heaven, wants us to open up and talk to Him. You can relate to that as a parent, I'm sure, for, for some of you. Listen. When you're in need, again, especially when you're fearful, you should talk to God about it. Don't feel like your request is silly or God is too big or busy to take the time to, to bother with your concerns. Don't feel that way. Don't worry about making your prayer filled with churchy, flowery language. Like somehow, okay, I'm coming to you, God. Now I got to somehow talk to you like I was living in the Old Testament times or something. I, I don't know all the proper theological terms. God says, listen, just talk to me. You know, this is all about relationship. Share with me what's going on. See, this sounds simplistic, but get to it. Tell God exactly what you need. Again, you can tell him what you feel. You can tell him what's going on. You can tell him how you're having a hard time. That's fine. Please add that to it, but get to the point. What is it? that you need, and talk to your father about it, and talk to him again about it, and talk to him again about it, and again, and again. Let him take this fear from you. Talk to the one who can do something about whatever it is that is intimidating you. 
Also, let God know you are genuinely thankful for all the ways he's already blessed you. Right? Now, some of us are pretty good. at say, okay, God, here's all my problems. And that's great. That's great. But Paul is adding, when you go to him with all of your worries and your stresses and your concerns, remember who you're talking to, but, but also be thankful when you do it. Be thankful. Rehearse the, the times that he has been so faithful to you. How many could say right now, man, you, you could take a half hour and come up here and just through your entire life, just talk about how God has been faithful to you in answering prayer. Anybody like that? Anybody? So God has been faithful to you. How about this, where God has showed up when you didn't expect him to, and you're saying, God, I'm so glad you showed up. Can anybody relate to that? God, thank you for not giving up on me. God, thank you for answering prayer. God, when I, there was a time when I wasn't faithful to you, but God, thank you because you were faithful to me. I don't know if anybody can have that as a testimony. God answers prayer. God is, God is involved in our life. Can God handle right now whatever problems you're dealing with and fears right now? Almighty God, almighty God, can he handle the problem you're in right now? Can he handle it? Can he handle this? Can he meet your financial concerns? Can he help you in your career, your job, or lack of job? Can he help you in your relationships, in relationships that have become dysfunctional? Is it all over? Is it past? Is it done? It, it's just, it, there's, there's no hope. Isn't it true that with God, all things are possible? So, so you know, we, we've often said, uh, you, you know, we, we've heard it said, you know, believe in God, but how many of us really believe God? Yeah. Yeah. When he says, I will help you bring your concerns and your burdens to me, cast all your care upon me. Why? Why? Because I care for you. I'm not only God, he's not just this power, but he loves you. He loves you, and he cares for you. And he says, would you please back that dump truck up, you know, where we can all hear the beeping, and dump your care on me because I love you, I care for you, and I am the one who can do something about it. And I am the one who will give you not only peace, but he says, I'll give you my peace. Think about the peace that God, that God has. And he says, that's what I'm willing to give you, Joe. Not just peace from this dude over here. I'll give you my peace. And that kind of peace, you can't even, how do you describe it? Man. So, let God genuinely know where you're at and that you are genuinely thankful for all the ways he's blessed you. Maybe when you are being consumed by fear or worry, maybe take about a half hour, or maybe set the timer for 10 minutes, and you'll see how you're just going to go blasting right by that. And do nothing but thanking God for who he is. Thanking God for how he's directed you and was faithful to you and helped you and helped your family and your parents and your grandparents. Some of you know stories of how God rescued people, how God had helped people and freed them from addictions and so forth. And just, man, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's going to change you. That's going to help you with a whole fresh perspective as you come to God with your burdens. By telling God, again, uh, by telling God that you are thankful to him for specific things, it reminds you that God is good. He is faithful, that you have reason that you're going to him with your worries and fears. The reason is because he can do something about them. Now, your prayer request might sound something like this. Father, thank you for the home we have. Thank you for providing shelter and protection from the sun and rain. I don't know how we're going to pay the mortgage this month, but I know you do. Please calm our hearts and guide our steps. You, you might have a prayer that would go something like this. Father, thank you for the first 70 years you've given me. I could spend days recounting the endless blessings and grace you've poured over my life. I'm so completely humbled by your faithfulness. I received a cancer diagnosis yesterday. I know you aren't supposed to, I know that you're not surprised by that, but I'm so scared. 
I'm terrified of chemo. I'm terrified to tell the kids. I don't know who will organize Thanksgiving or Christmas if I'm gone. I need to know you're here with me. I need to know that this will all be okay one way or another. And I need to know that if I'm gone, that someone will help my husband eat three healthy meals a day. Thank you for listening to me, Father. Now, these prayers won't necessarily be the same prayers for you, perhaps, that you'll pray, but you get the idea. We present our requests with thanksgiving to God. When we're faithful to put our fear and anxiety in its proper place, we can expect, we can expect peace to follow. So let's look at this finally. You know, as we do come to God and give him all of our concerns and our fears, we go to him and we give them all to him and we make our requests known with thanksgiving, we can expect peace. See, in verse 7 of Philippians 4, the apostle Paul says, then, okay, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. When you pray about everything, telling God what you need and thanking him for all he's done, you will experience something that may surprise you. You will experience God's peace. Did you catch that? Now, church, listen carefully. In this this formula that the Apostle Paul is laying out before us, Paul did not say, you will experience the exact outcome you want. He did not say that. You may or may not. Regardless, you will experience God's peace. So when you tell him all the worries, all that's causing you fear, all that's causing anxiety in your life, all all the, the, the weight that you are carrying like a backpack filled with blocks, that God is saying, why are you carrying that? Give it to me. I have strong shoulders. I want to carry that for you. He said, listen, you, you do that. You give me these burdens. I may give the answer that you're praying for. I may not. But here, you can count on it. You will have my peace. You will have my peace. You know, as you pray through fear, trouble, adversity, etc., you know, make sure that you simultaneously hold the expectation that God will come through on his end of the deal. We see this presented to us through the Apostle Paul. Now, rather than fictitious prayers, I'd like to present a, a real uh, case before you. And uh, my, my wife, Cindy, I'm going to ask her to come up. And uh, she's going to share part of her story of peace in the midst of fear. So let me get a microphone for you, honey. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people ask me through the years, has your husband been in my house this week? Because he's preaching right to me. Well, today and through this message, he's speaking to me and he lives in my house. (laughs) So he knows. (laughs) So I have my whole life struggled with worry and fear and anxiety and nothing that I've been proud of, but something that I've just had to deal with. Well, when I was a young girl, my mother passed away from cancer. And I always feared of that diagnosis, hearing those words, you have cancer. Never wanted to hear them. I remember when I was 40 years old, she passed of breast cancer. And I told my doctor, I just know I'm going to get this. I'm, I know it. And she was like, you're going to be fine. We've come a long way since your mom's had this. You're going to be fine. So it's just been a fear of mine that I've dealt with throughout the years. And um, five years ago, God led me on that journey. Um, I was diagnosed with endometrial cancer. And... Um, He did allow me that day for some reason to say, Mike, I need you to come to the doctor's office with me. And I don't know why, but I just want you to be there. And I then knew why, because at that office visit, that doctor said, you have cancer. And she said that you have a, you know, I don't think it's anything big or major, but it's still nonetheless cancer, and you need to have a complete hysterectomy. And and then we don't know what will happen from then on. 
And so as you can imagine, that fear just overwhelmed me. I, I think I cried the whole way home. It was like, how am I going to tell our girls that I have cancer? The things that go through your mind, all the what ifs, um, like he said in that prayer, and who's going to take care of my family? Am I going to leave them early? And how am I going to go through chemo if I have to do that? What, what's it going to be like? Where, how am I going to keep working because I need to work to help pay these bills? And your mind just goes, goes and goes and goes. Well, I, I struggled with fear, but I had to learn that God is there for me, and he was there every step of the way. And one day in particular, I I did read the scripture, and I had verses I, I carry sometimes. I, I have it at my desk now, a, a little three-by-five card thing that I keep special verses on. And, and through that time, a lot of them were verses from that time in my life that I would just write them out about fear and different things. But one day particular, in particular, Mike and I went on a motorcycle ride. And if you know anything, that's a fearful thing for me <laughs> because I don't like those motorcycle rides. But... Um, but he said, let's go on a bike ride. So I said, all right, I drag you shopping with me. I'll go on a bike ride with you. So I went on this bike ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So we're out on these country roads just riding, and I had, we, he had the radio up playing, you know, Christian worship songs, and a couple songs came, to my, came through that I was, they, they just impacted me, and they helped me through the rest of this cancer journey. And one of the songs you might be familiar with was Mercy Me's Even If. And as we were on that motorcycle ride, I'm telling you, it's a good thing we were on those country roads because I was just singing loudly. I was crying. I was just singing away because those words, God was just speaking to me. And it says, they say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing. A little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave the mountains unmovable, Oh, give me the strength to be able to sing, it is well with my soul. And he says, you've been faithful, you've been good all the days, all of my days, Jesus. I will cling to you, come what may, because I know you are able, and I know you can. And I just knew, God's my hope, you know, my hope is in you. Even if, whatever that outcome is going to be, even if, I know you're my hope. And that brought me God's peace that day on that motorcycle. The next song that came through was a song by uh, We Are Messengers called Magnify. And it's, I've been trying to make sense of the sorrow that I feel, holding on for life to the only thing that's real. I've only scratched the surface. I've barely had a taste. But just a glimpse draws my heart to change. And one side of you lays my sin to waste. I don't <clears throat> need to see everything, just more of you. Take it all, take it all away. Magnify no other name. Open up. Open up my eyes to see you. My sight is incomplete, and I made you look small. I've been staring at my problems for way too long. Realign my hope where it's set until you're all that's left. And then it goes down here. Take it all away. Take it all away. Magnify no other name. Open up. Open up my eyes to you. God, be greater than the worries in my life. Be stronger than the weakness in my mind. Be louder. Let your glory come alive. Be magnified. Well, you know, God helped me on that journey by increasing my faith through that cancer journey. I had, met, I had his word. I had many verses. I had those songs. And um, even today when I start to feel that fear creep in, because it's a, it was still a battle. I mean, I had a lot of good days, but I had a lot of meltdown days through that time. Um, a lot of times in the middle of the night, I would just wake up and, and sob. You know, what's going to happen? But God, he's faithful. And, you know, I, I praise the Lord that at this point in my life, it's been five years since I've had this cancer or had that cancer. I know I'm, I had surgery. I needed no other treatments. He saw fit to that. I am still at this point cancer-free. I have one more oncology visit in the fall, and I'm praying that, and my hope is in the Lord that that will be my own, my last visit. Because God is good. And I just want people to know. I prayed, Lord, give me more faith through that journey. I want more faith. And he's given me that. And my hope is that I'm magnifying the Lord, that my hope is, will continue to be in him, and that those around me will see how God works in, in all ways. And he's faithful. Amen. Thank you.
invite the band up if they would. And as they come, I just bring this to a close. You know, I know that a life free, free from fear and anxiety seems completely ludicrous. I know that there are some here today that are facing very difficult times in their life right now. Very frightening medical diagnoses and adversities of all kinds. But I ask that you commit this week, all of us, to develop a more faith filled response in every situation. Let's commit together to change our habits in relation to unhealthy fear. And I also challenge you to take time every morning to write out a few prayers similar to the ones I shared earlier, similar to, to Cindy's situation. Just whatever's pressing on your heart that in the morning you wake up, or maybe tonight before you go to sleep, you write out these prayers that you begin with thanksgiving as you rehearse how God has been faithful. And then you pour out, name, get to it. What is the issue? What is causing you this fear and so forth? And then close your prayer, kind of, you know, as you're, you're writing out this prayer with gratitude before God and trust Him. So I'll say this. Begin and end your prayer with gratitude. Name your request to the Father and trust the process. You're trusting the Father. You might do that on Monday and say, well, it hasn't helped. You do it on Tuesday. It hasn't helped. You do it five times on Wednesday. You rehearse it. You write out the prayer and maybe keep it with you throughout the day. You might have to pull it out of your purse or out of your wallet or out of your, your cell phone. You pull it up and say, I just need to look at this again. I just need to look at this again. Submit it again to the Father. And he, what did he say? I may or may not give you the answer you're looking for, but I do promise you this. You will get my peace. You will get it. I think Cindy made it pretty clear that, that she got God's peace. Yes, yeah, she did. But she had to get on the program with God, right? Just like all of us. And she had to have an honest talk with herself and with the Father. God gave her peace. And she admitted you know, she'd have to do this over and over again. Aren't you glad God isn't tired of hearing from us? Amen. Why are you talking to me about this again? You won't say that to me. No. <coughs> we do this. I, I genuinely believe it will lead to big breakthroughs in your life. And fear will have less of a stranglehold on you. You won't be as paralyzed. You'll have less fear, more trust, having more peace. God of all things. God of creation. God, we sang about it earlier, about you being creative and how you created all things. And God, that is powerful. You could just speak creation into existence handle our burdens. God, help us with gratitude that we give you what's worrying us right now. Before I finish my prayer, I want everyone right now, whatever's on your mind, whatever your burden is, whatever your concerns are, whatever your fears are, whatever's gripping you, start with Thanksgiving. Remembering God's track record with you, how he's faithful. Get to it. Tell them. Right now, tell them what's bothering you, what's worrying you, what's causing you stress. Tell them. Finish that prayer with gratitude. Rehearse this through the day. And anticipate, expect his peace to arrive. And God, with this thought, I pray this to be a very real experience in everyone's life that's hearing my voice. God, you're so good. God, you are good. You are good. You are good. You love us. You are powerful. You've done great things in the past. You will continue to do great things. Amen. And our hope is in you. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, as the Holy Spirit moves through us as expressions from the love of the Father, we magnify you this morning in Jesus.